Hello there, I'm taking a look um, at Van Morrison, uh, the pop artist, uh, born August 31st, 1945 in Belfast, Ireland. Uh, he started out with a group in the 60s called Them and wrote um, some classic songs with Them, uh, most notably the song Gloria. But he went on to a long and still um, continuing solo career um, ever since 1967. Um, here we see he has Gemini Rising and Mars uh, in conjunct with Gemini. Gemini is uh, the, the sign of the twins, it's the first of the air signs. Um, in the zodiac, uh, the first sign being Aries, fire, Taurus, earth, and the third sign, uh, Gemini, which is the sign uh, where, whereas Aries is I am, Taurus is I have, Gemini is I think, and it's the first sign of the mind uh, of communication. And he has also Uranus here, which is more of a generational influence, but um, it does not, it travels very slowly, so it doesn't reach uh, the same sign, but once every 84 years. So this is the generation he was born in, in the 40s, uh, had this in common. Another person who had this was um, uh, Bob Dylan. Do believe that Uranus had crossed over. I'm, I'd have to double check that, but it was either at the very end of Taurus or the beginning of Gemini in conjunct, uh, in conjunction. I'm sorry with Bob Dylan's son. And we see here uh, that he's a Virgo by the sun. Here in his um, fourth house, uh, not far away from his fifth. Uh, but in any time you have, um, here are the four angles, the first, the fourth, the seventh, and the tenth. The tenth is is definitely the, the um, angle, the uh, beginning of the tenth house, the MC as it's called, the midheaven, is uh, the highest point and is usually considered uh, your public um the way you're, you're perceived in the public. It's your most public, most out um, aspect. And, and as you can see, for somebody who is in the entertainment industry, most of his uh, planetary positioning is actually very close together. It's a, it's a bowl shape, um, all pointing towards this. Uh, it's below that horizon. Uh, which means that he's not really a very public person, uh, and that's um, that's an evidence from the fact that um, most people, um, even though they may have heard and be a fan of uh, Van Morrison's music, he's not known to be a very um, a celebrity type person that you wouldn't see him on talk shows, for instance, uh, or or doing a lot of magazine interviews. Um, he, he's very a very private person, and then it also comes through in his music. I think um, that um, he is not uh, very much concerned with outward appearances uh, now. Again, he has the moon in, in, the, in the, the first house, and this gives him a uh, person who wears his heart on his sleeve, his, the emotions, and the moon is in Cancer. Uh, although his rising sign is Gemini, the moon is in conjunction, and it's in Cancer, which is the sign that the moon rules. On top of that, he has his nodal axis, axis here, 
in Cancer and Capricorn, whose North Node is in Cancer, so South Node always, as it, as it follows, is in Capricorn. So, um, then you have uh, Saturn in Cancer. So here we have a strong emphasis Sun in the fourth house, which is the house that corresponds corresponds to the sign Cancer because it is the one, two, three, fourth sign and the first water sign. And all the water signs and houses are the private, um, uh, um, emotional, personal houses. They're, they're more about the inner, the feelings and, and the inner, inner world and the three signs three water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces are all water, and uh, the fourth, eighth, and twelfth houses, twelfth signs, I should say. Now, he, he also has a couple planets in the twelfth house, the Sun, Mars, Uranus. He has nothing in the eighth, but um, and he, most importantly, he has nothing in the 10th, the 9th, 10th, nothing up here at all, which again is the public sphere. So he doesn't have an actual uh, need or desire to be famous, um, which, depending on how you look at it, may be why he isn't more famous than he is. I mean, he is, he is famous, don't get me wrong, but uh there are people i would imagine especially younger uh music fans who though they might know uh who the rolling stones are or the beatles or jimmy hendrix uh, and other 60s i bob dylan other 60s icons they may not know the name van morrison for the sheer fact that van morrison uh <laughs> And I'd say this even more so than Bob Dylan, who's another person who's kind of shy of publicity or kind of downplays uh, the notion that he needs to do anything more than his art. And, you know, he doesn't, that he, he should have to promote it or put his own personal life or sacrifice it so that, you know, he can be more successful at, uh, in his career. So... I think all that, his, his, his need to communicate is obviously here with an angular Mars and Gemini and that being his ascendant. That being said, his need to be famous is not. But he is an artist, strong water presence. Um, Leo, he has Venus, Pluto, and Mercury. It is very creative, it's fire. Pluto and um, and Mercury are both in opposition to his midheaven, so there is a connection with his with his public persona, but it comes from a very private place. So I guess you could kind of say that um, he's known for being very private and, and Mercury is his ruler because it rules Gemini and it's down here too. I mean, how many people can even say they've heard Van Morrison speak outside of a, a record, you know, heard his voice when he wasn't singing. I mean, you don't hear him talking again, no interviews, very few interviews anyway. And I don't, can't even think of any time I've seen him, uh, on on a on a piece on television talking about music or with anybody, um, very private man, and it shows here. Um, his part of fortune is even in the fourth house, which is the house is the opposite house from the tenth. The fourth is your roots, where you come from, and where you go for for asylum or uh, for shelter, your home from the outside world. So it, lots of emphasis here in this area, the fourth house, especially with his Mercury and Sun, two personal planets being there. 
in the fifth, he has Jupiter, which is the planet of abundance. And the fifth is the house of uh, uh, creative. Um, it's it's the house of children. It corresponds with Leo, the fifth sign. And um, in the fifth house, we we and we encounter the uh, creative um, area. And as we can see here, Neptune, which is um, the ruler of Pisces and um, the ruler of um, all things mystical and um, spiritual and, and, and transcendent. Um, that would definitely describe his creative output along with Jupiter, the abundance of it and the 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 joyous quality. I, li I like to think that, I mean, there's a transcendence, but there's a joy to his music um, and, and joyful transcendence, these two together. These are both spiritual planets, Jupiter more in the traditional religious um, sense. Of, and also, you know, Jupiter also rules the law, um, the church, uh, higher education, and some of the as aspirations of Jupiter are a little bit more earthbound. There are still aspirations to go beyond the limits, though, uh, and to expand, whereas uh, Neptune is about dissolving all boundaries altogether. There are no, there are no boundaries to expand because with Neptune there are no boundaries at all, and that's why it goes beyond this realm. So those two together are, I think, a good description of uh, the quality and sound of his best music, and he has a lot of it. But, um, I can couple that with the. Uh, Venus and Leo, which is the creative fifth house correspondent, and Venus being uh, associated more more superficially. Neptune is definitely associated with art because that can be transcendent. It's also associated with film and things like that because of the illusion aspect of it. But uh, Venus is is the the first planet that kind of deals or kind of is associated with beauty and harmony and, and therefore some of the more pleasant or superficially pleasant aspects of art, not to say unimportant, but, but not as necessarily transcendent. You know, Venus is pleasure, pure and simple, but more of an earthly pleasure, personal earthly pleasure. And he takes a lot of personal pleasure in a very creative way. Um, and we see also that um, his Cancer Moon, very, very um, protective, sentimental, um, emotional feeling. Uh, position here close to the angle it's feeling anyway but here is an angle so it's it's again it's hard on the sleeve thing it's very it's it's the first thing that people notice about him when they meet him um, because that's what the ascendant is it's your first impression the sun may be the most important uh, aspect of your purpose and and growth in life but the ascendant is is where we come in and where how we look and how we appear to the world world one-on-one um, -on -one. whereas the midheaven is how we appear to the world publicly this is like more of a one-on-one -on -one type deal and the moon being there one-on-one -on -one, the first thing you notice about him is that he's very uh, sensitive emotional reticent um, probably shy tender, um, innocent, and, and to go on with what I was about to say, it uh, forms a square here, one degree cancer, 
uh, yes, one degree cancer to one degree uh, Libra, five degrees for Neptune. And this accentuates the sensitivity. Uh, Jupiter accentuates, grows everything. It's, it's the biggest planet in the solar system. So we know that it's associated with expansion of anything. So expansion of, of the Neptune principle in square, a tenth square with his emotion. So this uh, amplifies, is already amplified by being angular and it's further amplified by Jupiter squaring and Neptune squaring. This gives him a highly uh, refined artistic sensitivity and sensibility um, that falls in line with uh, also, Venus, his art, uh, sextiling these two. So he has a square with a direct line to his emotions, and Venus sextiling Jupiter and Neptune as well in Leo. Very, very creative, very um, uh, transcendent spiritual art. Uh, so yes, I wanted to uh, touch on his music, Van Morrison, and um, if you'd like, you can contribute to my Patreon page. I have the link down here below. Uh, I want to thank you for looking at the stars with me again.